Hello everybody and thank you for joining tonight. This is your host Nino, inviting you to an episode of Sheer Techno Lust if things go right. <laughs> for what we have in this package, and I haven't opened it yet, is the Book 8088 computer. A newly created retro laptop. That is a laptop with an 8088 compatible processor. Can't even guarantee that it's an original Intel 8088, but I wouldn't care all that much either. So, uh, what what is this? Why is this? Well, you know, we lust after techno gadgets, not just when they are new and shiny, but also when they have a flair of antiquity to them. Which reminds us about the times as a child when we wanted things which at the time likely even were unattainable. And buying an old computer, while very pleasant in its own right, is not really giving you the feeling. It gives you the feeling of getting a 40-year-old computer. It gives you the feeling of a dim LCD, of finicky capacitors, of a rattling keyboard. Whereas a newly produced machine should be closer to the experience you should have been having in the, I don't know, late 70s, early 80s, early 90s, whatever is your thing. And <laughs> so I found this book 8088 computer, which is a new creation of a laptop with an old microprocessor, a Far East Marvel, which comes in this rather unassuming package, like, hmm, nothing, nothing special here, just, just normal brown package. It arrived in the post, just packaged like this, <laughs> you know, so nothing too fancy there. And now we shall do the unboxing and see what is inside and what we are getting by way of an, a modern purchased antique laptop. So, we are getting a lot of bubble foil, which in its own right, like, oh, I love the bubble foil, right? Oh, the bubble foil, this, this, this one is a good bubble foil, it, it, it does pop easily, very good. So we get quality bubble foil to pop. We get, ah, for a moment I thought we got the wrong electricity adapter, but all right, that should be, yeah, I think it should be working. So we get an interesting contraption for, a, for an electrical supply. What have we got here? So getting out 12 volt at two ampere. Okay, and that then, ooh, the mummy, let's get Ansuna Moon out of her misery. Okay, and we are having here a booklet. Oh well. <laughs> It looks like Chinese to me and to everyone else too, I assume. <laughs> but fortunately, oh, if that's true, if that's true, that's a foreshadowing of great events. It might be a perfidious way of uh, persuading me to learn Chinese if you do such awesome stuff and then just send me such a description. <laughs> but. I mean, what shall be so complex about it? And then boxes in boxes. Let us remove the bigger box then. And then we have a smaller box. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and now we're getting to the affair itself. So that is the book. 8088 machine. All right. Dun 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 dun. dun. So that's like my personal black monolith. Uh, <laughs> like from the outside, what have we got here? 
Yeah, that must be the CF card adapter or CF card itself, actually. It was written that the operating system should be installed on it. The whole thing seems to be semi-translucent. And there is the audio port. That, I don't have any idea what that is. That might be a reset button or something. Like, why else would it be so red? Don't press the red button, huh? <laughs> and now let's have a look at the chips before we start things up. All right, so what have we got here? Uh, barely readable color graphics adapter. I mean, that's nice. So that, that was one of the extra versions. Like, you could get it also with just black and white, I believe. Oh my gosh. What's that? Is that supposed to be the CPU? If it's a NEC, NEC from Japan, then we would be having a good chance that it is something like a, I don't know, NEC V20 compatible or something that would allow me though to run natively CPM programs because the NEC V20 has both modes. It can work both as an 8088 and as an 8080. All right, so that's our little, oh my goodness, is this lovely. So it's about the size of a netbook, as you can see. And uh, here's another chip. What's that? Ah, that must be the main CPU, exactly. Oh, it is a NEC V20. Look at this. Oh, if this is running, if, if this machine is running, and I can purchase an 8087. Oh, I love this. But if I um, can run, uh, like you see here, the 8087 <laughs> slot is empty. Uh, but if I can run a NEC V20 on this thing, I will be actually able to run CPM programs unemulated, just like straight on the CPU. It is possible with a program to switch the CPU into 8080 mode and thereby run things directly. And I just have to remember the name of this, this, this little marvel. It is also something which you could do in old handhelds that were featuring the NEC V20 and also the NEC V30, something I have done. So let me connect this connector and see whether the house blows up. Uh, oh, it's like, I don't know, pulling a tooth or something. Uh, are you going to enter somewhere or not? Like, this is... Okay, these are unequally spaced. I don't know why, but this doesn't really get into anything. Let me give you a break and see what I can connect this. So, well, <laughs> standard European hexagonal plugs apparently too much to ask for this thing was simply too broad and would not be fitting the plug so i had a rasp at it not something i normally would be expecting to do with computer parts i admit but now this actually fits my plug would it be advisable for anyone to plug in a thing of so dubious quality that one has to rasp away at it no Will I plug it in? Definitely. So let's see whether the house blows up. No, excellent. Ah, wonderful. Didn't blow up, but I still haven't connected it to the power connector, wherever that is. Where is the power connector? <laughs> this is the audio one. Ah, that must be the power connector, that thing over there. So moment of truth, didn't blow up either. Excellent. So, it's not exactly like we have a manual for this, or we have one, but it's in Chinese. So pressing the red button gives us a split LCD. Ah, no, that's just a, some stupid sticker. That's not a split LCD, it's just something stuck onto it. Well, I'll take care of the sticker afterwards. <laughs> Might be just a protective folio. Okay, but okay, at least my screen is fine. Everything is okay. 
And I'm going to zoom you in perhaps just a little bit more so that we can see what is happening here. So I have MS-DOS started. And so far, everything seems to be operational, which is, which is good news. <laughs> and surprising, you know, surprising that anything works after the adventure so far. No, that, that is unfair. Actually, uh, it, it looks lovely. They have written an 8088 processor, but they have put in something better than that, a NEC V20. And now let's see what we have here. Right. It's interesting that it mentions C Windows. I would wonder, of course, what Windows that is. We are seeing a directory called PC Basic. That's great. And the directory called Windows. So let's go to Windows. Yeah, hello. Yes. 17 files and stuff. Where's my command prompt? Ah finally returned so there windows what windows might that be we are having here win exe but with the speed of this i mean gosh ah oh i don't have a mouse what would i be starting windows for uh and the only connector I have is USB. Like this is indeed a DOS machine with USB. So this, this thing is somehow blinking. This must mean something. Ah, the battery is blinking. So yeah, the battery sign is blinking. Likely the battery hasn't been charged fully. I mean, big deal. No wonder, of course it comes from storage and stuff. So it should charge its battery. Yeah, we will permit that. The CF car note here, CF is fine, but CH is blinking, whatever CH is. So, still, uh, I want to, I want to see this. I have to see this. There, there was some trickery, right, with tabulator and whatnot. <laughs> we'll survive that. Windows 3.0. Oh yes, baby. <laughs> ah. A modern Windows 3.0 machine with USB. Are you kidding me? I, I want to touch here the touchpad, but there's no touchpad. Oh God, this is, this is working. This is apparently working. So I'm having here a print manager and Windows setup and clipboard and DOS prompt. Very nice. What was it? Uh, was it alt escape? No, alt, no, alt escape. What, what, what is this file? Okay. The program manager alt tab should switch me, but it doesn't. All right. <laughs> not, not exactly sure what to do here. It's not a touch screen, so I can't do a thing here. Would have been nice to make it a touch screen guys, you know, like really when when you're combining the old with the new like that, uh, alt space. Yeah, I can maximize, minimize, switch to. Yeah, but let's do that. Task list. Um, cancel. Alt tab. I'm lost. So I'm at the program manager, but the Windows 3.0 shortcuts are eluding me a little bit. Hmm? <laughs> Control space, alt space, it was alt space. Let's try to maximize it and see what happens then. There must be something in the background. Alt space. No, I don't want the whole alt space thing. Tap, tap, alt file, options, window. Ah, window. I can now go to Windows applications and non-Windows applications. What are the Windows applications? I'm just having WAF, Smart, Mon, and something. Okay, what was that again? Alt escape. 
Control Escape. Ah, Control Escape is this task manager. Okay, was it then Shift Escape? No, just Escape. No. Control Escape is again. Oh, I, I really should stop that. <laughs> let's let's see. Uh, controls. I think it was Alt Space. Yes, Alt Space. Nope. Ah, Alt W. Alt W is the window. Okay, non Windows applications. Show us the non Windows applications, please. So, Microsoft Advanced Basic. Foxbase Plus. Again, Advanced Basic. And some Make Utility. Alt W. No, come on. I didn't. This, this is starting to become like a joke. Cancel. So, Alt W. So, accessories. Oh, come on. Ooh. <laughs> uh, I need to get a mouse. I mean, I've got paintbrush. This, this is absolutely awesome. And terminal and write. I love write. And notepad. Very good. So, let's start the notepad. I've never actually used Windows 3.0. I was always the 3.11 uh, guy, the Windows for work groups thing. Hello there from Windows 3.0. So I have now used Windows, right? But we're gonna exit here. Oh gosh, I have to try a USB mouse on this thing eventually. Save current changes, no. Okay. And yeah, I think that's pretty much what I was having, right? Alt W. So the accessories I have, main is nothing. Yeah, the control panel and the file manager and things like that. So in other words, I don't have an office, right? I need to get an office suit. <laughs> games, what, what is on the games? Solitaire and Reversi, this thing which Steve Ballmer was all the time advertising in this one advertisement about Windows that you get it with Reversi, but unfortunately I don't know how to play Reversi, so Reversi works, but I have no idea, hint, yeah, please, and, and how would I be doing that with like pressing space, ah, very good, so I have played Reversi, but I don't know the rules of Reversi, so just exiting it, this is sad, <laughs> okay and let's just exit windows by now because we have now checked everything and well there are a couple of lovely things save changes okay i must also say i, I will better connect a mouse to to try that again but anyway we do have um we do have windows on this and if i get up and look again what we are having. So there is, what on earth is TW and UCDOS and Foxbase? These, these must be the directories of the stuff we, are, we were seeing. Okay, let us go to TC. This, this might be Turbo C, not LS, but there. That would be, however, amazing. Gosh, it, it really might be Turbo C, though, because we're having a hello.c. What? This thing is coming with Turbo C. Oh, yes, it is. Look at this. Look at this. So if I say TC, will I get a Borderland development environment? I will. Oh, oh very good. I saw a hello world file. And we will load that. Why not? Yes, it is. Okay. Then Alt C, make exe file, build all. Yeah, build all. Uh, 
outrun run error unable to open include file file standard io.h really did i do anything wrong here maybe make exe file here would it be then finding it no at all can't find standard io.h then let's quit it and let's dear anything.h hmm now that's interesting again dear it's funny i don't even have to use dear a uh, dear p for because this is so slow Uh, dear include okay I don't understand why it was not compiling correctly apparently I have to set this up just a little bit because standard io.h is right there but still we give it a star for the effort that was nice now you see it gives me the impression of a very nice idea executed actually in a sort of lovely way but the disadvantage of the whole thing seems to be that they did not test it like nobody plugged in that plug before selling it nobody tried to compile the hello world program they they deliver before just slamming it on the disk and, and giving it to people so it will require a little bit of own action but then again who gives you a new dos computer with usb right so oh so we have both g with basic and basica i like basica more it's more old-fashioned no significant difference but k okay <laughs> okay list what oh gosh i realize what is wrong the whole thing is left shifted by one character what this is exactly also why i don't happen to see here uh the leftmost letter and it's really missing like uh, this is ridiculous okay system Great. CLS. Awesome. Okay, reboot the whole thing. Like, this is not nice. You see how it right shifts the characters? So, yeah, booting from C, starting MS DOS. The screen seems to be a bit of an issue. Okay, CD PC basic. And let's try GW basic. That is not left shifted. That is at least focused on the screen as it should be. Ah, then I will be using the more modern basic, right? Like, <laughs> okay, then print. Hello. list and a run so i have a basic so the most basic requirement for this is fulfilled and that's a positive thing so with that uh, the only question remaining will be can it actually read usb sticks and can it handle a mouse and these are two things which we will try out right away so let's first try the usb sticks i'm having here a usb stick which has been formatted to fat 16 on arca os this is the successor to os2 you remember this os2 warp 4 and so on like arca os is one of those 
successors afterwards after Ecom Station. Anyway, it programmed it in FAT16 and it was mega capricious about standards. So this must be like the most standard USB stick I own. Okay, plugged it in, nothing happened. Maybe it has to be booted with a stick inside to notice it. Let's see. Dear D. Not ready. Tja. Fail. Oh, whatever. Abort. Okay. Dear A. Doing something. This is interesting. Is it stuck? Is it reading? Hmm. Okay, where was again that Chinese manual? Okay, so we're having here something about it. Driver for USB disk version 2.0a Add this blah blah interrupt blah blah at disk D. So the whole thing should be under disk D. Hmm. So there's an explanation exactly about that. Well, it's not the end of the world. I mean, worst case, I would have to use the CF card itself with a CF card adapter and just plunge things directly onto the disk. But apparently, in order to be able to use uh, the USB disk, I'll need to do things here. And A is certainly not available. Okay, then not. <laughs> I, I will have to fight with that, but it's not something which would be plug and play which is also not expectable under DOS in all fairness. So maybe I should stick the drive back in and just reboot and see what happens. Hmm? How, how complex can that be? All right and hop and reboot. Love the memory test to 640k. <laughs> they should be enough for everybody. But have you tried coding these in assembler? Like really like filling 640k is not, not such a toy actually. Not so easy. Uh, okay, so. Uh, dear D, will that work? Not ready. Well, abort. Type config dot sys how's that going so we're only having yeah what the heck I mean this is set here right that was exactly that what they were describing yeah this is the ch375 dos dot sys ch375 dos dot sys and then So the device is set, but is not recognizing the USB stick. Okay, so <laughs> the issue is, of course, that DOS and USB disks, that was not a thing, that was not an obvious thing to, to, to have. It was a weird add-on later on. Okay, let's try now with the mouse. Weird. The disc, uh, the the stick has to be inserted in reverse, right? Like, oh come on, focus. So this is like the upper part, the lower part, and you see the port is made that you put in things facing downward. Okay, put it in facing downward. Great. Uh, refocus here, please. Turning on the mouse. Unfortunately, I have just one such mouse. Like, I have no other mouse right now. And let's try with... Let's reboot it. Let's reboot it so it has started with a USB mouse. If it doesn't start with a USB mouse, it would be pointless to try it with a mouse in general.
how weird. Now that is this driver trying to add my mouse as a disk. <laughs> not gonna work, my dear, not gonna work. Maybe removing this driver, connecting... No, but if I remove this driver, then how will I be connecting anything on the USB port? So... Okay, this is hung. Because it notices the USB of the mouse and is trying to handle it. Yeah, and the moment I removed it, it continued starting. So no choice there. I bet Windows will not recognize the mouse, but it is nonetheless worth a try. So, win. And, oh, what a pity that the mouse will likely not work. I mean, this is Windows 3.0, needs a mouse. Nope, doesn't. Like I can move it around, but it won't work. Ah, no, negative. Mm -mm. I'm moving around the mouse, but it's totally not reacting. So, <laughs> if I were to install Word and Excel on this, that's something I'm extremely tempted to do. By the way, this was described somewhere as an expansion slot. Haven't tried that either, but highly tempted to do so. Looking around, I don't see anything where I would otherwise be able to plug in the mouse. So, I have Windows, but I don't have a mouse. Well, then that shall not be the end of the world. We exit Windows. Yeah, I know. We make ourselves very acquainted <laughs> with the Windows shortcuts so as to not try around blindly. Maybe I should print out a list of what exists. So USB mouse does not work. USB stick should work, but doesn't. I'll give it one last try. I mean, apparently it needs to be booted up with the USB stick in it. So. I'm really shutting it off from electricity, not just quickly rebooting it. Then I'm plugging in the USB stick, not beforehand, so this is the difference in the experiment. USB stick has been plugged in without electricity. There's no 8087, yes, there isn't, indeed. Starting MS-DOS, add disk D, disk not found, yeah. So, <laughs> regrettable as it is, my USB stick is um, just, just not going to impress anybody. Well, that's a pity. Let me read up just for a moment. So the way this looks, there is really no solution for that. But they did write, apparently, a solution for the shifted characters thing. Like, like notice that they, they, they know about this and they tell you apparently to do mode 80. Okay, so let's go to PC Basic. Let's start Basica. which now works and and how it right shifted and left shifted it is phenomenal so now basica is working let's go to system and we have no reason to complain so this seems to be some sort of display bug which they have a solution for though and i must say i accept that like workarounds are accepted <sighs> what is there then perchance in game they are writing about general failure reading drive C. What? Uh, not very good. Okay, I'm restarting this. Maybe because I pulled out the USB stick. I mean, the NEC V20 is working. 
it's gonna be actually the main fun If, if I'm not going to use USB, I'm just going to remove this anyway to just free up some memory because memory always mattered. CD game, dear. Arcanoid, A, B, C, G, A, and Duck. They were advertising Duck, so let's go for... Let's go for whatever. It doesn't summarize what it has. Really? <laughs> Did read the drive C though? Yes, and I have half a gigabyte free. I understand the processor, it's never been made for a disk that large. Like, at the time you would be happy if you have a disk a hundred times smaller. So what have we got here? Likely something named Duck, right? Yeah, Duck. Uh, <laughs> wow, Duck seems to be giant. Okay, let's try Duck. Afterwards, let's try Doom, but <laughs> maybe not in this video. Uh, to CGA detected. Use command line parameters CGA, EGA, VGA, MCGA, Tandy, or PC Junior to override automatic detection. Press, press Y to start the game. Yeah, let's press Y. Like, why not? Let's look at Duck. New game. Okay. Arrow keys to move. Okay. Previous data will be erased, are you sure? Okay. That is duck. Can duck jump? No. Duck is really just moving. Ah, it cannot jump because it's under a thingy. Uh, no, it just cannot jump. <laughs> Space also doesn't help. Press up to read note. Left or right move, down or five, look down, Z jump, X fire, a firing duck. Okay, choo choo choo. Uh, oh, jump and fire duck. That's how we imagine ducks to, to, to do. Okay, so this is apparently some duck exploration game. And the duck can go through the world into level five press up to enter the level i'm trying ah just up arrow oh okay so this is a duck exploration game i don't know what to say uh i'm going to quit to dos now but it is actually lovely am i sure yeah i am sure so with that, oh, it colored my screen now. And it removed the C sign. So now we have to try mode 80. And nothing happened. And we're trying to say mode 80 again. <laughs> it refuses to work. Like, I don't know who, who, who devised this, but this is ridiculous. Mode 80. It did work. Like, if Einstein has said it is madness to try the same thing and expect a different result, ha, eat that, Einstein. <laughs> okay, I I'm not going to try the other games. I think that's pretty much sufficient for for today. Fox Base. I don't have any HD copy. I don't have anything to... To play further but HD copy of course looks interesting HD copy X so this must be something to copy the hard drive somewhere I'm just not gonna do this I'm just going to use a CF to USB adapter and then I am simply going to to copy the entire CF card in Linux or Windows like <laughs> no 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 trust in that I'm sorry what else do we have? Did I miss something? So Turbo C, which I'll have to fix a little bit. TW, whatever that is. DOS, clear. PC basic. TB, what the heck is TB?
Uh huh. So this must be some sort of turbo basic, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So I press TB. And I'm waiting. And I'm waiting longer than Windows is taking to boot. Okay, I'll put you on pause so you don't have to wait. But if this thing doesn't show up anything rather soon, yeah, well then. I'll, I'll just cancel it right now. No, I'm canceling it right now. This is not doing anything like. This is ridiculous. Come on. TB apparently, whatever Turbo Basic thing this must have been, is just hanging the machine. Oh, let's spare you the boot. I shouldn't have spared you the boot. It showed something interesting. And we will do the whole thing again. Apparently, F6, it was showing com detect. Com detect, right? Hmm. Very strange. I don't know what com detect is. Is com detect the mouse? Mm -hmm. Let's try that. Just a moment. It's not the mouse. Now I tried again to press com detect. Um, like I pulled in the USB afterwards for the mouse. Didn't work in Windows. Now I put it in again while booting and guess what, uh, this is now again thinking that my mouse might be a floppy drive. So this is evidently not it and not working. Let's try something else. See I have an emergency USB floppy drive, should I need to very quickly connect something over floppy. So I put a floppy disk here. I'm placing this now, connecting the floppy drive to the USB port. Ah, but I have to do it in the reverse, right? And now let us reboot the whole thing and see whether the floppy drive will be recognized because it is definitely a type of disk it should be able to notice. Like what are you there for if you can't figure out floppy drives? Starting MS DOS. No, no floppy drive. Which is, in fact, a pity because the BIOS in my main machine is recognizing the floppy drive and immediately takes it as drive A. So, whatever this is, whatever USB driver they are having, it's not working. It likely I'll have to just supplant it with a different one. Well, I am very sorry about that. And let us just try one final Thing. Let's just reboot it one final time. It was pressing something about showing something about pressing F8 for the boot ROM. Pressing F8, pressing F8, pressing F8. So here's the boot ROM or ROM boot. What is not found basic? All right. So basic in a ROM is not available <laughs> in all fairness it never was like uh, maybe at some point in the beginning of the 80s but i have never actually owned a machine which would boot to basic likely it is one of those empty sockets where i can supplant such a 
basic ROM, but I don't have one. And that means that ROM boot would have been to boot straight to basic and ROM, but I can live without it. And with that, I believe we have had a careful enough in-depth look at this little machine. I do hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for having been here today and I hope of course to greet you here soon again. Until then, have a wonderful time and from me, goodbye. Post dictum. I think I figure out what is wrong with Turbo C. Look here under options and directories. The Turbo C directory is set to C backslash Turbo C2. It should, however, likely be just C backslash TC. Let me try that. All right, changed it. And now the moment of truth, right? Uh, escape it. Let's try after I have fixed the directories to simply make the exe file. Oh, uh -huh. success. All right, and then Alt run, right? Okay, apparently it recreates it, doesn't matter. Ah, that was too brief to see, but likely if I now quit everything simply, we are having here our hello world. So yes, indeed, Turbo C is working on the book 8088 computer.